wake up tomorrow morning, look in the mirror, and see yourself staring back. But it's not a reflection. It's your clone, living and breathing, with your exact DNA. Sounds like something straight out of a Hollywood blockbuster, right? Well, what if I told you that the science to make this happen already exists? Welcome back to the channel, where we explore the fascinating intersection of science fiction and reality. Today, we're diving deep into one of the most controversial topics in modern science, human cloning. We'll separate the Hollywood myths from the scientific facts, explore what's actually possible today, and examine why this technology has scientists, ethicists, and governments locked in heated debates around the world. Before we jump in, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Trust me, by the end of this video, you'll have a completely different perspective on what cloning really means for our future. Let's start with what most people think they know about cloning. Thanks to movies like Star Wars with its massive clone armies, Blade Runner's replicants, or Arnold Schwarzenegger's The Sixth Day, we've been conditioned to imagine cloning as this instant process where you can create a full-grown adult copy of someone in a matter of hours or days. The reality? It's nothing like that. Real cloning is actually a painstakingly slow biological process that takes the same amount of time as natural reproduction. When scientists successfully cloned Dolly the sheep back in 1996, it wasn't some magical instant duplication. Dolly was born as a lamb, grew up normally, and lived for six years before dying of lung disease. So how does real cloning actually work? The process scientists use is called somatic cell nuclear transfer, and it's genuinely fascinating. Here's the breakdown. Scientists take an unfertilized egg cell and remove its nucleus, which contains all the genetic material. Then they take a somatic cell, that's any cell from the body except sperm or egg cells, from the organism they want to clone. They extract the nucleus from this cell, which contains the complete genetic blueprint, and insert it into the empty egg cell. The tricky part comes next. Scientists have to essentially trick this reconstructed egg cell into thinking it's been fertilized naturally. They do this using electrical pulses or chemical treatments that jumpstart the cellular division process. If everything goes perfectly, the egg begins developing into an embryo with the exact same genetic code as the donor organism. But here's where it gets complicated. The success rate for cloning is incredibly low. With Dolly, scientists went through 277 attempts before achieving one successful birth. Even today, with decades of advancement, cloning success rates remain frustratingly low across different species. Now, let's talk about what makes human cloning so different and controversial. Technically, the same process that created Dolly could theoretically work with human cells. In fact, Scientists have successfully created human embryos through somatic cell nuclear transfer for research purposes. But here's the crucial distinction. No human clone has ever been brought to full term and born. The scientific challenges are immense. Human cloning would likely have even lower success rates than animal cloning, meaning hundreds or thousands of failed attempts for every potential success. Many cloned animals suffer from serious health problems, including premature aging, organ defects, and shortened lifespans. The ethical implications of subjecting human embryos to these risks are staggering, but the ethical concerns go far beyond just the technical difficulties. Think about the psychological impact on a human clone. How would it feel to know you're an exact genetic copy of someone else? What about identity, individuality, and personal autonomy? These aren't just philosophical questions anymore, they're real considerations that society needs to address. There's also the question of consent and exploitation. Who would have the right to clone whom? Could parents clone a deceased child? Could governments create clones for specific purposes? The potential for abuse is virtually limitless, which is why most countries have banned reproductive human cloning entirely. However, there's an important distinction we need to make here. While reproductive cloning, creating a full human being, is widely banned and condemned, therapeutic cloning is a different story entirely. Therapeutic cloning involves creating embryos for medical research and potential treatments, not for bringing them to full term. This type of cloning could revolutionize medicine. Imagine being able to create genetically identical organs for transplant patients, eliminating the risk of rejection. 
or developing personalized treatments for genetic diseases using cloned cells that match a patient's exact genetic profile. The medical potential is enormous. Several countries allow therapeutic cloning research under strict regulations while maintaining absolute bans on reproductive cloning. It's a delicate balance between advancing medical science and maintaining ethical boundaries. The current state of cloning technology continues to advance rapidly. Scientists have successfully cloned numerous species, from cats and dogs to monkeys and even endangered species. Each success brings us closer to understanding the complexities of the process and potentially improving success rates. But with great power comes great responsibility. The scientific community remains largely united in opposing human reproductive cloning, not because it's impossible, but because the ethical, social, and safety concerns are simply too great. As we look toward the future, the cloning debate will only intensify. New technologies like CRISPR gene editing are adding additional layers of complexity to these discussions. We're living in an era where science fiction is rapidly becoming science fact, and society needs to carefully consider how we want to proceed. The truth about human cloning is that it's not the instant army building technology of Star Wars, but it's also not complete fantasy. It's a real scientific capability that forces us to confront fundamental questions about what it means to be human and how far we should push the boundaries of biological manipulation. What do you think? Should human cloning research continue under strict ethical guidelines, or are some scientific boundaries meant to remain uncrossed? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like this video if it changed your perspective on cloning. For more mind-bending explorations of science and technology, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.